everybody stand with me. We want to welcome you this morning to New Fellowship Full Gospel Church in Manville, Tennessee. Praise God for another opportunity to be in his house. This time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you this morning, God, I thank you. And I praise you for everything that you've done, God, and I praise you for everything that you're going to do. God, all the praise and honor and glory goes to you, God. I pray for those that are sick and afflicted, God. I pray for those that need to touch from the Master's hand. It's not, it's not my life, nor my power, but God, it's not my spirit, says the Lord of those. God, I thank you for this day. God, I pray for those that are in the hospital, God, that you will give them to touch God, those that are alone and sick and afflicted, I pray God that you will give them to touch God, I thank you for everything that you've done, God, and I thank you for everything that you're going to do. Because God, I love you, and I praise you, and I thank you for your many blessings, Father. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody, we'll count on me, bring us in the choir.
here today. Now, Sister Marty, since you just decided graciously to join us, we're going to sing the Bible Festival. That's 26. Okay. I just want to make sure. And it's if you bring something, you can bring your stuff, and you can set up the table, and then, but all we ask is that you donate something to the uh, food pantry. And I mean, money wise. <laughs> so that way we can, you can tell me it's not like you won't, won't take out your money if you make it out of the But I think they want to sell the pot back right there. Yeah. We want to sell the pot up to the roots. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. help to that too. So that would be good. So if everybody wants to bring some wings or something. I don't know. You got a head of it. <laughs> Do you need any of that chili or? Do you need anything? <laughs> Praise God. God. Uh, there you go. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be glad to cut up. It's good to be in God's house today. How are you going to sing? Christy, are you going to sing? Oh, you know what I'm
James. I want to know who you're a friend of. Who's your friend? Think about that a minute. Who's really your friend? Is it your husband or your wife? Are they your friend? Or is the world your friend? Who's your friend? You got your Bibles going to be in the book of James chapter 4. I'm going to start reading verse number one. I want you to listen to the writing, what James is saying here. It says, From whence cometh war and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that wars in your members. You lust and you have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot attain. You lie, you fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. 
You ask and receive not because you ask to miss that you consume it with your lust. You adulterer, adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enemy with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit who dwells in us lusts to envy? But he gives more grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. So interesting, one of the most quoted verses you'll hear anybody say, but they don't know how to use it. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Drive nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinner, purify your heart, ye devil minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your life to return to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and listen. And he shall lift you up. Think about that. Let's read that last verse again. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall. Notice he said he shall. Lift you up. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you today, we thank you and we praise you for your many blessings. God, I thank you, Father God, most of all, for sending your only begotten Son, and we can have life and have it more abundant. God, I ask you to open up our hearts and our minds to receive from you today, God. Because, Father, it's not our will, but thy will, God, it's not our way, but thy will. God, I thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. And Everything that you're going to do, God, I thank you for the singing in here, the, the songs that were sung in Zion. God, I thank you for God. Lord, I ask you, God, to open up our hearts to receive your word today, God. Let us get out of the way, God, that you do what you have us to do, God. And I pray, God, that those who are listening out there by way of Facebook, God, I ask you, God, to touch them, God. Open up their hearts to receive your word today, God, because this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice, sir. And God, I thank you and I praise you for your many blessings. Father, it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We look at these passages of Scripture, and I don't know for all week long, but the Lord was just giving to me about uh, who are we a friend with and uh, why there is no power in the church anymore. Church, can I tell you? Uh, hallelujah, glory to God. We just can't act any way we want to. We just can't live any way we want to and think that everything's going to be all right, church. If we're a friend to God, we need to act like we're a friend yeah. to God. We need to leave the world alone and let God uh, supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Uh, we look at this first scripture. The first verse, it says, from which come of wars and fighting among you? Uh, can they come they not hence even to your lust and to war in your members? Uh, can I tell you what church there's more trouble uh, or more bigger in fighting by the church than they are out in the world. Uh, everybody wants to be in charge. Everybody wants to be look at me. I'm somebody. Can I tell you we ain't a nobody without Jesus Christ in our life. Uh, yeah. We're not anything. Uh, we're saved by the grace of God. Yes. God told him, get on our way to heaven. Hallelujah, glory to God. Listen to me. If we can't come into God's house and praise and worship him, and if we can't come into his house and have love and peace and have this church, we need to find an old-fashioned altar somewhere and cry out to an almighty God and say, God, it's me. Have it start with me, God. Help me to be what you want me to be. Now get that strife out of me. Get that envy out of the way, Lord. Let my light shine that I can do what you'd have me to do. We look at this passage of scripture and we go into verse number two and it says, You lust and you have not. And you know, I want to stop right here and it says, You kill. I want to explain that to you. I looked that up and I got to share it with her. Listen to me. This refers to believers, listen to me, who try to destroy the reputation of another to gain advantage or to do it by slander. Can I tell you, church in the world today, there's so much bigger than, than slander. Can I tell you, hallelujah, I don't know how you're going to get to heaven. Hallelujah, where's your love and your joy at for your brother? The Bible says when your brother's down, they will stand them up higher than you. Yeah. And your brother's got something wrong. Get out and pray with them. That God can move in their lives. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm going to tell you something. 
and Satan's ram. Its theology is to knock somebody down so you can gain their authority. Can I tell you what? It's not the way God works. He wants you to get down and love them. He wants you to get down, glory to God, and lift them up. As the Bible says, to esteem your brother higher than yourself. That's what's wrong with the church today. We don't want to esteem our brothers or our sisters higher. We want to say, look at me. Can I tell you? I'm a nobody. And God reached down one day and saved me and put
Paying your tithes is more than just giving your money. It's giving your time. Yeah. How much time do you give God? Or do you just give it when you come to church on Sunday? Or do you come to church on Sunday night or Wednesday night? Is that the only time you ever open up the Bible and say, Lord, tell me what you're going to do today? How do you listen to me? That means every day open your Bible and pray. Yeah. What, listen, to be a friend of God, you've got to have a prayer life. Yeah. What's your prayer life like? Do you just pray when you need him? Is he a spare time? back of your vehicle. No, he needs to be right there with you. He says, I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I want to be your friend every day. I want to know what you're going through. I'm there to help you. I'm there to reach down with you. And when you get tired, I'll be the one to give you strength. He says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when you're tired, I'll be right there with you. When you're weary, I'll be right there with you. When something happens to you, I'll pick you back up. They're here 
The Bible says they came in one mind and one accord. This is the church. If we can't agree together down here, yeah. I don't want to agree together when we get up today. Yeah. If we can't agree yeah. as friends, one for another, if I can't pray, yeah. if I can't pray for me, how are we going to get to heaven? Uh, that's right. Come on. But if I've got the love of God and the friendship of God in my heart, I ought to be able to be able to shake hands and say I love you yeah. and mean it. Because listen to me. The devil just needs a little bit to get into you. The devil just needs just a little bit to come in and kind of to come in and knock us down. Go over somewhere with this church. We started in February. God's a movement. You know why I know that God's a movement? Because the devil's trying to stop people. He's trying to take people down. Now, if we ever pray for one another in this house, it's now. Right. If we ever come close together and pray and seek God's face for one another, it's now. Because yeah. when the enemy comes in, prayer changes things. Yeah. 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 But if we got a prayer life with God, and you'll see it in verse number 7 in this chapter, how the James talks about how to have a, how to have a prayerful prayer life. Because church, we failed in having a prayer life. We just pray on Sundays or Wednesdays or whatever we have. We need to be praying every day. Lord, pray for my church. Lord, I'm praying for everybody in here. We need to be praying every day. And I tell you what you need to do when you start praying. Think about where everybody usually sits and go in and say, listen, bless my soul. Bless them, God. Bless their covenants. Bless them, oh God. You see what they're going through today? God, give them strength. God, to help them to make it along the way. That's what they're making along the way. Pray for them. Because listen to the church. There's three kind of churches. The church that has a little bit of prayer has a little bit of power of God. Second kind of church is a church that half of them prays and the other half don't. You have so so prayer of God. But if you want to have a strong church in the land, about how many people is in the church? But it's how many people can touch God yes. and pray. Right. And reach out to God and move in a mighty mighty way that you can have a powerful church yes. with God. Yeah. You don't have to put a sign on it and say, we're, we're here at this church. God will send the people because they know that you pray. Yeah. And that's what we need here. The new fellowship. We're surrounded by so much stuff going on. We need to be a light in this community. Yeah. We need to be a friend. Because listen to me, church. Where did Jesus go when he was here? He didn't participate in the sin, but he went and ate with the sin of the lost time. Mm -hmm. But he didn't participate in it. That's what's wrong today. We go eat with the sin and we want to be like the sin. The Bible says, come ye out from among the world and be ye separated. Yes. This time we come out and be separated. It's time we stand up and have a relationship with God. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse number five. Do you not think that the scripture said in vain, the spirit who dwells in us lusts to envy? What is your husband? What are we lusting after? Hallelujah, church. Most of the time, it's of the things in the world is still after the things that God has to do. Everybody wants peace in here. The past is all understanding. That no matter what you're going through, God will give you peace. And the only kind of peace that is is knowing God. Amen. And let me tell you, I've messed myself and my life up many times, but God's always been right there to pick me up, pat me on the back and say, keep it going. Church, that's what's wrong today. People are being knocked down and there's nobody there to pick them up or say, come on, God loves you, God cares you, God loves you, God cares for you, now let's go. Come on. We want to have a friendship with God. We need to start doing what the Word of God says to Love thy neighbors as thyself. How many knows who your neighbors are? You talk to them? I do. I'm going to have a whole bunch of neighbors. <laughs> Lord help us. 
not by choice, but that's all right. We still going to pray for them and invite them into God's house. Because look, I want to have, I want, I want the church to have a prayer line that's strong. But look at verse seven, Lord. James is going to tell us how we need to pray. It says, "Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you." We hear that quoted all the time, and we think, man, as many people quote that Bible, you would think scripture, you would think, man, alive, things must be happening. <laughs> Preacher, I quote that all the time, and nothing happens. Where's your heart at? Who you got fellowship with? Who you hanging around? Garbage in, garbage out. Word it in, word it out. Amen. Come on. You want to have a strong prayer life? Start submitting to God. Start giving in the things that God wants you to. God ever tell you to do something? Because I'm going to tell you something. There's some of you listening right now. That God's drawn the line and said, until you submit to me, you ain't going no further. Because I've been there. You don't want to get in that condition. You think, well, I've been doing this and I've been doing that. God says, I need you to come now. Mm -hmm. I need you to submit to me now. I can help you, but you've got to step out. Listen, we walk by faith and not by sight. It ain't what you see that matters, but it's trusting in God to know what his word says and stand on it. Keep it moving. Keep going on. Because it says, submit yourself therefore to God and resist the devil, then he'll flee. Because look at verse number 8. It says, draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Think about that. If you come to him, he'll come to you. But most of us, the Bible says in Hebrews, to come to the throne of God with great boldness, and we're standing outside the throne. How do you think, well, do I need to go in or do I need to stay out? Can I tell you the veil was ripped at Calvary? There's no excuse. God's waiting for you to come on in. He's standing right there. That preacher might be listening. You might need to go through the fire. You need to be purified. You need to be changed. Why? Because God will make you a better person. All right. Amen. Come on. Yes. Because look at him. He don't stop there. Clean your hand. Clean your hands, you sinner. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Think about that. Clean your hands. Purify your heart. You can't be double-minded. When you pray, how do you pray? Go with me here. Lord, I need this. And you pray it. And before you turn around, you're doubting what you just prayed. I tell you, you're double-minded. It ain't working. Don't be double-minded. If God said it in his word, yeah. you stand on that word yeah. and say, God, I'm standing for it. Yes. You sit by your shots where you heal. God, I'm standing on you going to heal my body. Yes. Yeah. Lord, you said you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. God, you see this bill that I'm not coming. I'm trusting in you. I pay my tithes. I give it the offering. God, I've done everything that you asked me to do. God, I'm holding on to your unchanging hand because you said it. I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know how it's going to happen. But God, I'm trusting in you. Yeah. The Bible says you need to prove to him to see if he's not God. Yeah. Amen. But you can't be double-minded. you got to have Go in with a, the right thinking. Lord, I, I'm trusting in you. I'm believing in you. You said it and I believe it. Because the two things that the enemy wants to throw at you is fear and doubt. They're cousins. Matter of fact, they ought to be first cousins. Because when fear comes in, doubt comes in. But if you don't have fear, you've got the love of God. 
And she said, I don't give you the spirit of fear, but I love peace and a sound mind. Right. And if we can hold on to that right. and stand on that, I don't understand, God, but you said it. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm believing it and I'm standing on it because you said it. Hallelujah, just listen to me. Father, I was saying it. I submitted to you. I gave it all to you. God, I'm trusting you. Now, Lord, help me. Help me. Sometimes it's hard. But don't be double-minded about it. God, you said it. I believe it and I'm standing on it. I'm holding to your unchanging hand. I'm not wearing to the left and I'm not bearing to the right. But I'm believing in you. I don't have nothing at this. I ain't got nothing to turn back to. Oh, I got something to look forward to. Hallelujah, I'm going to be like Brother Paul. I'm pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. It's out there. I've seen it. I believe it and I'm standing on it. I'm not veering to the left. I'm not veering to the right. God, I'm pressing on. I'm almost home, Lord. I'm hanging on just a little bit longer. I know we don't have much longer. Can I tell you? If we realize how close it was to the coming of the Lord, we'd be crying out to God. Lord, touch my people that are lost. Lord, touch my family. Lord, touch my friends. If we was that knew how close it was, then God steps out on the clouds. We had a strong prayer for We gotta press on. We gotta keep fighting the good fight of faith. We need to have a friendship with God yes. like we never had before. Let me throw this at you. What happens if they come in and they tell you, you gotta take this chip. Sell or buy, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Don't like it about it. A corporation up in Wisconsin, in the United States of America, that they're working, you have to take the chip tree. You can't buy nothing in the facility. You can't even get in the doors of the facility until you take their chip. They're wanting to now for the U.S. military, if it's possible. They haven't passed this year, but this is, they want the military instead of, we used to have dog tags. When I was in the military, you put them around your neck on a chain. Now they don't want you to have a dog tag anymore. They want to put a chip in you so they can monitor you. If you get out on the, on the battlefield and you die, they can go to that chip and monitor and tell you who you are, where you came from, and everything else. Can I tell you, they're just setting it up for the mark of the beast. And that's all right. God be for me, who can be against me? Yeah. I'm on the winning side. Yeah. I've read the back of the book, we're going to win. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said his grace was sufficient in the day of need. He said, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every yeah. tongue that shall rise against me shall be condemned. Why? Right? Because that's my heritage. That's what yeah. I that's what I got. When I knelt down in an old fashioned home, yeah. he gave me the help that I need. He gave me the love that I need. I just gotta go out and do what God says to me. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something now. Brother Floyd can tell me, you can care. I don't care. But there ain't nowhere in here. He said, when you get saved, it's going to be easy. If it is, please somebody tell me. Because I ain't read it, and I've read it from Genesis to Revelations. <coughs> but it says, you're going to go through things. Yeah. But he says, be of good cheer. Yeah. I've overcame it all. Yeah. I've made a way for you to get yeah. through what you're going through. I've made a way to help you when nobody else has been right there. Yeah. I'm the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. I've led the way in the midnight hour when the world of the day is there. But I'm still right there holding your hand. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'll be your friend. I'm going to tell you something, church. <laughs> and don't take this the wrong way. I need, I need the Lord. He's my friend. But I need you. 
Lord, I need you. I need to pray for you every day. You need to pray for me. Yeah. We need to pray for one another every day. I need you. You need me. And it ain't no little eyes or big eyes. We need each other. Because if we can come together and be strong in the Lord, with a few, and we can be powerful for God. Yeah. That's right. Come on. But we got to have that love. We've got to be clean. We've got to separate ourselves. And I'm learning. And my wife will tell you, I don't care anymore. I pray for a lady not too long ago in the middle of Walmart, not in the center aisle. I was looking for some stuff for my wife. She does a fast, does a great job. And I couldn't find this glue. She said, some kind of special glue these crackers use. And I said, ma'am, do you know where this glue was? And she says, oh, yes. I said, I'll show you. She says, yeah, when you pray for me, I just get out of prison. And she said, no, no church home can even come and be with me because I've been in prison. And I said, I'll be praying for you. And I walked around the corner and Lord said, go back and pray for her right now. Thank you, Lord. He said, you'll pray for right now. <laughs> so what we do, I went right around and I found her again. I said, honey, I said, you might think I'm strange, but I said, the Lord wants me to pray for you right here in the middle of the center of Walmart. We was right in the center aisle of Walmart. And I said, can I hold your hand? Let's pray. Listen, we can't be ashamed of him no matter where we're at. Yeah. I'm right, Brother Cole. If you need prayer, we're going to pray now. Yes. And I'm believing it. When yeah. We pray. Yeah. Don't ask me to pray and not believe. But if you ask me to pray, I'm believing that God's going to move on yeah. my behalf. That's the kind of friendship I got with the Lord. I'm believing. Hallelujah. That he's going to move. Yeah. But you got to understand something. On his behalf, the way he wants you to move. He wants it to be. Because I can pray and miss sometimes, and I have. For something selfish. But when we pray, God. Will and we know what the will of God is in the Word of God, God will answer our prayer. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Because there's some of you listening today. I just don't know what else to do. This is happening and this is happening. Can I tell you, God can help you. Yeah. God can make a mess and fix it up. Yeah. Remember when your kids were little and they would mess up the room and you think, oh, why did they do that? And maybe 30 minutes later after you get a mess, after you get a straight now, I go, wow, that looks good. Can I tell you, God can do the same thing for you. He can take the mess that you're in, straighten you out, and fix it, and make you smell like roses. Why? Because he loves you. Yes. And he cares for you. He's thinking about you. He wants you to be his friend. He's calling out for you to be his friend. Because I'm going to tell you, the friends of your world that you have, they'll let you down. <coughs> and, and I'm going <coughs> you, to, you put your faith in me instead of God, I'll let you down. And I'll be the first one to tell you. But if we put our faith and trust in God, can anybody in here raise your hand and say God's ever let them down? We ain't always got what we want, but God's always supplied all of our needs. God's always made a way for us to get us out of the situation we are in. God's helped us when nobody else will help us. And I can tell you, me and my wife are our behalf is that God will do it for us. He's took sinners before to meet our needs. He's took sinners to help us. Because he said, whatever you all need, I'll help you. Notice I said, need not your wants. God will help you. But God's got to be number one in your life. God can't be number two. God can't be your spare tire sitting in the back of your truck. Until you have a flat, you'll change it. You say, okay, God, you're right. No, he needs to be number one every day. 
every day. Can I tell you, God loves you. God sent the best in heaven to take your place. God sent the best, His only begotten Son, to take your place at Calvary. He was beaten beyond recognition of his mother and, and his family didn't even know who he was. But when he was hanging between the heavens and the earth, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But about a few hours earlier, he was in the garden praying. To much to the moon. His, his cries, was, his blood was turning. His cry was turning into blood. His message, he cried so hard. He said, Lord, not this way. My will that thy will be done. Lord, let this come back to me, Father. Not my will that thy will be done. You know, when he died and he gave up the ghost, they didn't kill him. He gave it up on his own. But he just didn't die. He made preparations for me and him. What do you mean? He went and he conquered death, hell, and the grave. No more stain. I made a way for you. He took the keys. The dead fell in the grave and he could have life and have more abundantly. Because on that third day he arose. <coughs> if he stayed that way, I know the culture back in those days ain't not about three days. Anything that happened to a body in three days. But he proved them wrong when he rose on that third day. When that earthquake came, when that stone was rolled away, he came out. Victory. Can I tell you, you can have victory this morning. God can give you peace that passes all understanding this morning. God can make a way for you this morning if you trust in him. Because listen to me, church, there's so many people come into God's house and trust God to get them through something and you never see them in the house of God again. Can I tell you, they didn't get saved, they got saved. Because the truth is, true salvation will make you hunger for this. It'll give you a craving to want to know everything you can know about the serving God. But it's up to you. Stand with me this morning. I want to read verse 10 again. It says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Understand that? He shall lift you up. So our question I want to ask you today. If you walked out these doors, you don't have to raise your hand, but I want you to think about it. If you walked out these doors, and you met the death angel face to face, where would you spend eternity? I've had people tell me, preacher, oh, I'm going to go I'm going to hell with my friends. We're going to have a big party. Can I tell you, that ain't going to be the kind of party you want to go to. <clears throat> Can I tell you, there will be no more peace for you when you get to hell. It's going to be torment day and night, forever and ever and ever. The Bible says, for the worm dies not, gnashing the teeth. And the sad thing about it is, the Bible says, that hell is enlarging itself daily. Shame on us. Shame on us. Won't you do me a favor? Every head bowed, every eye right closed, please. No one looking around. I don't believe in coming back in there and grabbing you by the hand and rubbing you down here and going to help you a bit. Because of the drawing power of God, it's not going to draw you. I can't help it. You're out here listening to me this morning. Can I tell you, you're not here by accident. God had you here for a reason. You're looking for peace. You're looking for joy. You're looking for a friend called Jesus. But if you're here this morning, never head bowed, never eye closed, no one looking around. Would you 
say, preacher, I'm not for sure if I'd spend eternity where I would spend it if I walked out this door and the death that drew me. Would you raise your hand and say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to come back and grab you, but I'm going to pray for you. Or say, one in this house today can say, preacher, pray for me. This is not a game. People are dying and spitting hell wide open every day. You don't have to. You may be out here today and say, Preacher, I used to serve the Lord, but I turned my back on you. I'm not where I need to be with God. Would you pray for me? Can you raise your hand? Is that what it is? Are they one? God loves you. God cares for you. God's knocking at your door. You've got to be willing to submit to him. Preacher, it doesn't matter what you've done, God loves you. God cares for you. God sent the best that he had for me and you. So won't you come? I'm going to with you. Every hand bowed, I'm going to give you a chance. With no one looking around. If you want to come and pray, come on. There ain't nobody going to laugh at you. But God will pray. We'll pray with you. There ain't nobody going to make fun of you. Listen, we've all had to make that walk down the aisle and turn it over to God. Are they wanted here this morning? You can walk down here and say, Preacher, I need prayer. Because I'm not where I need to be with God. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Tomorrow may never come. Would you come? He's standing with outstretched arms begging you to come. He loves you. He cares for you more than anything else in this world. I love my mother. She's gone on to be with the Lord. But the Lord loves me more than my mother me. I love my wife sitting back there, but the Lord loves her more than I do. What are you waiting on? Don't put it off. Come on. Meet me right here in this altar. God cares for you. God loves you. Would you come? I did want don't put it off to tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. So I've been one. All right, you can raise your hand. I'm going to pray for those listening out there on the Facebook. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for those that were listening to this morning. God, I pray, God, that you would minister to those out there this morning. God, if they found an old fashioned altar to cry out to you, God, if they can be a friend to you. God, I pray for those that are sick and afflicted, listening, God, that you, the anointing of God goes out, God, that the anointing will touch them. Hello, son. God, because it's not by mind nor by power, God, but it's by thy spirit, says the Lord of course. God, I praise you and I thank you, God, for those that are listening today. God, that you meet their needs according to your riches and glory. Father God, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just 6 15 tonight, and God bless you as a prayer. Is there anybody in here in prayer before we go?